Welcome to the DeForest Area School District. Thank you for taking a few minutes to learn more about our district's commitment to engaging our community partners, our focus on student achievement, recent celebrations, and the opportunities that await us in the future. This is Eric Renez, and I proudly serve as superintendent for the DeForest Area School District. Our district is committed to engaging, challenging, and inspiring every student so they may realize their potential. Our systemic focus on student achievement, beginning with our school board's governance approach, to the administration's strategic planning, to the educational experiences our children receive, support the future we envision for our children. We recognize the importance of educating individual students where they are at and based on their needs, so they grow to be citizens that make meaningful contributions to our greater community. We know that this work begins with and is dependent on a strong school, home, and community partnership. The DeForest Area School Board continues to lead the district in providing a world-class education for our community's greatest asset, our children. The board has long been a coherent governance board charting a course for the district that aligns with the community's expectations. More recently, they have increased their focus on student achievement by establishing results policies that are focused on specific student outcomes and operational expectations of the district to support those outcomes. The administrative leadership has aligned its work and practices to move us toward the board's expected results. Our school district has a long and proven history of partnering with our community and valuing stakeholder input. Recent examples of engaging stakeholders to make well-informed recommendations for school board consideration include the facility planning process in 2013 and 2014 that resulted in two new elementary schools. The district again engaged stakeholders in 2017 to assist with redrawing elementary attendance boundaries to best utilize elementary capacity. In this past school year, parents were engaged in discussions about the future of the 100-year-old Morrisonville Elementary School. The school board values stakeholder input to help inform their decisions. A key long-standing stakeholder engagement opportunity is a future search process that we call Framework for Our Future. The Board of Education has been using this unique community engagement process since 1999. It has proven invaluable for district leadership to learn about the community's hopes and aspirations for our schools and students. This high-level engagement process informs the work of the district on a wide range of issues. The district utilizes a structured process over three days to identify issues and trends that are shaping our schools. If you'd like more information or are interested in participating, please email our Community Relations Coordinator, Debbie Brewster. The DeForest Area School District is a sizable organization in our community with considerable operational responsibilities as it serves all or portions of nine municipalities over 100 square miles. To the south and east, we serve small portions of Madison and Sun Prairie and as far north as Highway 60. We are fortunate and thankful that the communities within our boundaries are experiencing strong economic and residential growth. With steadily growing enrollment, our district will exceed 3,800 students in 2018-19, with approximately 1,800 of those students taking advantage of our transportation system to access their education daily. Our district is a significant employer in the region, employing 475 full and part-time employees. We are proud of our 97% graduation rate, with 80% of our graduates going on to higher education opportunities. Although those are good stats of student outcomes, we want to continue to increase those rates. Our students' world-class educational experience goes beyond the classroom. DeForest Area High School offers 22 sports recognized by the WIAA with boys tennis as our most recent addition. And our student athletes achieve, boasting 64 conference championships since 2000. In addition, we offer a number of co- and extracurricular opportunities like FFA, forensics, or world language clubs. Whether through athletics or any of our extracurricular activities, our students build the leadership, collaborative, and personal skills necessary to be successful in an ever-changing world. There's been a good history of success in our schools. All of our schools meet or exceed state expectations based on the Wisconsin report cards. 
The state report cards measure schools and districts' academic performance and growth using a number of success factors like graduation rates, attendance, and discipline. Our schools have met or exceeded these standardized expectations. With a point of pride that Eagle Point Elementary has attained and exceeds expectation score the past five years in a row, these results further fuel our focus on our work around continuous improvement. Another point of pride for student achievement are our results with advanced placement programming. Advanced placement are college level courses taught at our high school. Students take a cumulative exam and if they attain a score of 3, 4, or 5, the majority of colleges and universities throughout the nation will award college credit towards their degree requirements. In the past five years, we have seen a 50% increase in students enrolling and taking exams with an attainment rate of 70%. To support this increase in demand, we have increased our course offerings by nearly 90%. All of the success earned DeForest Area High School recognition on the College Board Honor Roll in 2017. We want our students to be college and career ready. Last year, 144 of our high school students earned certifications through internships or co-curricular activities and experiences that prepare them for real-world vocations. Nathan Bradshaw and Melissa Shong are recent examples. They earned the Wisconsin Global Scholars designation by successfully completing a global education curriculum and experience that fostered the development of global competencies. We are proud of our high quality professional and support staff and the tremendous work they do to ensure exceptional learning experiences for all of our students. A number of our staff have been formally recognized for their contributions to public education, including Kate Dabichek, who was one of five Crystal Apple Award recipients out of 500 nominations. Three of our student service staff were recently honored as outstanding educators by the Wisconsin Council of Administrators of Student Services. Our high school associate principal, Doug Crowley, was named State Associate Principal of the Year in 2016-17 and two of our high school teachers were selected as Cole Fellows and joined an elite group of only 100 selected annually throughout the state. They are a sample of the outstanding staff we have in the DeForest Area School District. We take our responsibility of being good stewards of our community's dollars seriously. The school board, with the support of administration, has established strong financial policies and practices that has resulted in our district earning the highest standard and poor's rating amongst Wisconsin public schools. Our AA plus rating is based on our management of our nearly $40 million annual budget, including a strong financial reserve, district leadership, and the community's growth. The district has enough fiscal reserves to avoid short-term borrowing, saving the district hundreds of thousands of dollars annually while ensuring the district takes care of our financial obligations. Because of the strong economic and residential growth within our district, our equalized property value has steadily increased resulting in DASD having the lowest mill rate in Dane County for the 2017-2018 school year. We work hard to try to offer solid educational opportunities and facilities. It is important to note that the revenue allocated per student our district operates with is less than the state average in all but one of our surrounding neighbors. It is significantly less than Monona Grove, who we mirror in size and demographics. We've been fortunate to experience increasing enrollment to help slightly offset this discrepancy but it will become increasingly more challenging to maintain and add programming to ensure our students have a world-class educational experience and remain competitive with their peers. The district's fiscal and facility work done back in 2013-2015 accomplished a lot, specifically addressing the anticipated increase in elementary enrollment but a number of the priorities and needs identified during that process moved to the top of the list today and in some cases have become a more pressing need. Their work resulted in a number of positive results with overwhelming community support. Due to the financial considerations, it was impossible to get everything done at that time. 
Now we need to revisit their work and reassess the needs of our students and the community and invest our energy in a long-term facility plan for our district. The Forest Area School District has much to be proud of, but we do have a number of challenges and opportunities in our future. Student needs have expanded, including schools being more responsive to student trauma or mental health issues. We've done a lot to secure our schools and build a climate and culture that is inclusive and safe, but more work is necessary to ensure our schools are warm and welcoming and secure. As we've shared, our community and region have been very fortunate to have considerable economic and residential growth. This has resulted in steadily growing enrollment, which will begin to put significant pressure on our school's capacity as these same buildings begin to age and reach their life expectancy. An example of life expectancy is our high school pool built in the late 60s and is heavily used for school, youth, and community programming nearly year-round. These are just some of the challenges and opportunities the district will face in the not-too-distant future. To begin addressing these issues, our district has begun the work of creating a long-range facility plan. One of the first steps we took in the long-range planning process involved an assessment of our facilities that would provide us with a comprehensive overview of the condition and adequacy of our facilities. We hired Epstein Ewan Architects and Findorf to conduct a facility study. They not only walked through our buildings inside and out, they also interviewed our staff to understand programming facility needs. We were not only interested in the age and condition of the buildings, and their components, but we were also interested in the facility's ability to continue to meet the educational needs of all of our students. The facility study focused on the adequacy of our buildings around whether our facilities provided the necessary learning environments, are secure, or the condition of the structure. It also reviewed the capacity of our schools and if we have the necessary space for our growing enrollment. This is an example of how adequacy was reviewed by EUA and Findorf using an adequacy matrix where they provided feedback around seven areas including site, safety, environment, etc. Adequacy also addressed the general condition of our building envelope and infrastructure. The majority of items identified confirmed what was already on the district capital improvement plan. A key factor in the study of our facility's capacity begins with enrollment and projecting future trends, whether growth or decline. Every year, the district gathers and reviews this information regarding enrollment and population trends, and we use this data to inform our decisions related to staffing and spacing needs. We are very fortunate to be a growing district. Many school districts in the state are experiencing declining enrollment, which presents challenging decisions around staffing and programming reductions. Growing enrollment presents a different set of challenges and often puts pressure on a district's facilities. Our most recent enrollment projections show the district increasing enrollment approximately 1,000 students by 2025. Here is a further breakdown of the enrollment projections showing its impact on our elementary schools. Although Yahara is projected to be just under capacity by 25-26, our other elementary schools are projected to experience significant pressure of the economic and residential growth in our community. The 2015 referendum was rightfully focused on the immediate elementary growth and lack of capacity of those buildings at, th at that time. But that enrollment growth will be rolling forward to our secondary buildings in the upcoming years. The middle school is today already nearing capacity and is projected to surpass that threshold in the next few years. Based on the capacity analysis, the high school has classroom capacity currently and into the future, but this doesn't address common spaces such as the cafeteria, library, gym, etc., where today we are already seeing significant pressure in those spaces, which were not built for even our current enrollment. The district has significant opportunities ahead of us in the near future. Based on projections and the recent facility study, some of those opportunities will present sooner than later. To prepare for these future challenges, we continue to engage in long-range facility planning. To that end, that work comprehensively studies a number of components, including innovative learning and instructional space, security of our schools, enrollment demands, the facility needs to support community use, 
and of course aligning potential capital improvements with our financial stewardship responsibilities. So the district has begun with a comprehensive facility study. The next step to long-range facility planning involves engaging community stakeholders by convening a community advisory committee. This cross-section of community volunteers will advise the school board on how to address space and operational needs for the next 10 to 15 years. The committee is open to all district residents, parents of students in our schools, and our school staff. The committee will meet about twice a month starting in August, moving through until their work is complete, maybe January. You can follow this committee's work on our district website. The CAC is advisory to the school board and helps inform their decisions. To help the CAC's work, the board is guiding principals on expectations around district facility decisions to ensure student needs and the district's focus on student achievement are supported by the educational environment. These guiding principles are posted on the DASD website. This same information was presented to several community and municipal groups in July and August, including three sessions for the general public. At this time, we invite you to use the link provided to give your reactions to the information presented. Considerations you would like to provide the Community Advisory Committee and Administration and the School Board, as well as to ask questions. And if you are interested in serving on the Community Advisory Committee, please review the CAC charge given by the Board of Education and express your interest by completing a short survey, emailing info at deforestschools.org or calling 842-6582. Thank you again for sharing your time to learn more about the good work occurring in our district and how you can partner with us to provide the best educational experiences for all of our community's children.